We'll be using the particle link add-on for this. I don't know how to do this manually. Well, I do, but it would take 20 years to stuff that. But anyway, let's go from start to finish in creating this wonderful animation. Now, all this was created using the particle link add-on. There is a link in the description if you want to support the channel, use that. If not, so let's start off using Pricey's a wonderful thing. And we go delete the default cube, shift A, add in a mesh, add in a torus. So let's start off with our torus. First thing we're going to do is come in and create a new particle system. The numbers, let's just go maybe 250. And I want them all to pop out at the same time. So our start frame is going to be one, our end frame is going to be one, and it's going to spawn 250 of these particles. Let's give it a lifetime of about 150. Now the next thing I want to do is create kind of like the points. So let's start off going Shift A, let's add in a mesh, and we'll add in, add in a UV sphere. I'm going to press G and just move that off to the side because I don't want to know about it. Let's come back into our particle settings, come down into render. We're going to change render as from halo to object, and then we can select our sphere. So now all those points are going to be spheres. Brilliant. From here, I am going to keep it all the same scale and I like the, well, let's make it a little bit bigger. Yep, that should be fine. So when they spread out, ugh, let's go 0.05, we'll bring that back down. The other thing is, is I when I'm rendering, I don't want to see the emitter. So let's turn that off. Now from here, if we kind of just play, you can see they all fall to the ground. Let's come down into the force field settings. No, let's come down into the field weights and turn gravity off. So from here, what's gonna happen is when I press play, you can see that they kind of just expand out. And this is pretty much what I wanted. Um, we could even come in up to the top here, velocity, we can change the velocity. I might just randomize the tangent a little bit. Um, and then if we go back to the start, yeah, that's a little bit cleaner. Uh, I might go back about two frames. There we go. So now let's go into the particle link add-on. From here, I'm gonna select link active. Nothing has happened. Let's come in and create some of the stuff. Now, if we press, I'm gonna set the end frame to 150 and we press play, you can see we've got these lines. Now they're all curvy. That's not the effect that I'm going for. I really like the straight lines. So the mode, we change to one and now we've got those lines kind of building, which is exactly what we want. Uh, let's just pause it. We're a little bit too far out. So let's go back to about frame nine. And if we go to the top view, this is what we've got. Now there's not that many links, so we can increase the branches and we can also increase the distance. Maybe let's go up to five. Um, and then when we start scrubbing through again, you can see those links are getting, getting built up again. From here, let's go down to geometry. Um, we will increase the extrude, I believe. No, we will come into the geometry of the bevel. Let me just hide myself for a sec and we can see that we've got Taurus 1 IKPL. And if we come down to geometry, select round and we go depth, we can increase the depth. And so now we've got all those connectors. So we've pretty much got what we're after. I think we might even increase the amount of branches. And let's go like so, maybe three more frames. I am really liking that. Now, obviously we can keep that as the animation, but I just kind of want that steel image of just crud kind of like looking like this. From here, what I'm gonna do is on the Bezier curve, let's come into the modifiers. Nothing is there, which normally there's a modifier. Let's come into the particle system. From here, I'm gonna make, in make instance real. There we go. Now what we can do is we can come in here and delete our torus because we no longer need that. And you can see that we've got all our Bezier curves in here. Now, the thing is, is if I select one of these objects, we can see that everything is selected. So they're kind of instanced of each other. We want to make that all separate. So I'm going to select everything. Let's come into object, into relations, make single user, object, data, and materials. Actually just object and data. So now I can come in and select one and that's all we're doing. So now we want to accomplish that depth of field effect. Now I could go with a really shallow f-stop, um, but what I like to do is normally even make it even greater and really stretch it out. So what I'm gonna do from here is go scale, 
and increase the size like that. Why is not everything moving? Because I don't have everything selected. So press A, scale on the Z, beautiful. From here, I'm gonna go into the individual origins, deselect our Bezier curves and then scale Z. So we have this. And now if we come into the top view, we can see that it still looks the same, but everything is a lot more stretched out. Let's go ahead now and add in our camera and expand our scene. Shift A, let's come in and camera, there we go. G to the Z will bring that right up, lovely. Um, oh, ready had a camera. So this is what we've got at the moment. Let's come into the camera, we'll add in depth of field. I'm just gonna go into rendered mode. Where do we want our depth of field? Let's go empty and we'll just go in a cube and this is gonna be our focal point. So with the camera selected, let's come in, focus on object, which will be that cube. And let's go F stop, maybe 0.5. And we can see that the foreground is really in um, out of focus and the back is out of focus as well. If we go 0.1, how crazy is that gonna look? Well, it's a little bit too extreme, 0.25. There we go, so that looks nice, nice. But I want to make the colors from the bottom different to the top. So we're gonna have that kind of gradient coming through. So from here with this object selected, we might even just convert it to mesh for now um, because we're not gonna be changing it anymore. So let's go convert and beautiful. From here, let's just select everything and we'll go control J to join. So everything is now one object. Let's now come into shading and we're gonna create a new material and this one's gonna be our particle material. Okay, so from here, let's go control T, bring that over there. Let's delete our image texture and we're going to add in a color ramp. So vector into there, color into here. Next thing, let's go object into vector. And now you can kind of see what we've got. We've got it from the bottom left to the top right. Now I've got these previews here. This is the node preview add-on, which I love. So if you wanna pick that up, there is a link in the description as well, but that's your choice. So from here, we want top to bottom. So if we come into kind of like this view, let's go rotate X and which way are we going? Not that way. Let's go rotate 45 on the Y. Let's rotate 45 on the X and that hasn't done it. Let's maybe go for 45 on the Z as well. There we go. So now we've got the black is our bottom, the white is our top. Lovely, lovely. From here, let's go into uh, the bottom. I kind of want a nice bright blue color. And the top, we will go with a nice orangey color. And we'll bring that in. And it is not being very prevalent, which is slightly annoying. So what we can do is we can move it up and down a smidgen. Um, we can even scale on the X. Let's go into rendered mode so we can see a little bit better. I'm gonna plug the, plug the color into the emission as well so it really pops. And let's see if we can work this out. All right, so now if we come into this view, yeah, look at that. Mm. Mm. So I really like how that's come out. Let's maybe just do a short little animation just like we saw at the start because I'm probably gonna use this as the example at the start because I haven't created the start yet because this will be the example. So with that, I'm going to select the camera first at the top and then we'll come in and select our box, Control P, parent to object. What this allows me to do is control the camera, uh, control the rotation of the camera. So everything's gonna be done with the camera. So let's come into the start here. I'm gonna press I to set a location and rotation. Um, what we might do is go 350 frames. Well, let's go 400, why not? And then about four frame 400, I want it to rotate 360 degrees on the Z axis. I'm gonna press I to insert a keyframe and rotation. So what we're gonna have is, it's gonna start slow, and then kind of it'll slow down again. However, I kind of want a constant speed, so I'm just gonna press T, 
and then linear, and that makes it a little bit more smoother. At about this point here, I'm gonna rotate X, and let's bring it something like this, I rotation. And so this is gonna be kind of, yeah, we're gonna get this nice view. It's gonna come down and then go back up. Now that's a little bit harsh there, and that's because we have made it linear, but we want that one to be kind of like a bezier. So we want the, uh, the gentleness. So let's jump over into the animation tab. Up here, we're gonna change it from the 3D viewport to the graph editor. Let's go, I don't need the X and, I uh, don't need the locations. We want X rotation, I think. There we go. So let's select this. I'm gonna press T on this uh, point up here the, to bring up the interpolation. I can talk. Let's go Bezier. And so now we've got that um, gradient. So now if we come into here and we come back into this scene in here, we can see it slows down and then comes back up. <laughs> Idiot. Now let's go ahead and set up the scene. Um, I've done this before previously in other videos, but if you wanna watch this one, please do. And if you haven't already, subscribe. Help me out, please. Please. Um, from here, let's come over into the render settings. I'm gonna come down into color management and we're gonna change it from filmic to standard. Looks better already. The other thing we can do is probably make a white background. Let's have a look what that's gonna look like. So we'll just go into the world settings and we'll change that to white. Oh. Let's not. Let's go black. Oh, that pops. That pops. From here, we can even come in and add in our ambient occlusion, our bloom. Almost gives that a little bit of a holographic look i think now that we're animating like this let's bring out that depth of field a little bit so it's not so harsh and we will go to maybe one so we still have ever so smidgens maybe 0.75 yeah nice nice from here we're in eevee it should render pretty quick render animation easy peasy lemon squeezy so once again, if you haven't already, subscribe. Just helps me out. Pretty please. Please.